In this screencast, we're going to take a look at uh, conformity. Now, before we talk about conformity, let's talk about the fact that um, in, in this group, we can actually look at social and group influences. Um, research shows that being involved in a group can uh, significantly inf influence people's behaviors. And in one of the other screencasts, I even mentioned the fact that uh, just walking down a sidewalk or walking down the street, your behavior will be different if there's somebody walking near you or if anybody's even watching you, um, you know, from a yard or something. So um, people will behave differently because of groups. And uh, if you look at some extreme examples, look at Hitler and the Nazis and how that many people in Germany behaved in ways that they would never have normally behaved. But uh, the Nazi party became a very uh, strong party and got to the point where people were conforming with those policies. Uh, Charles Manson family back in the 1960s and 70s time period when uh, literally Charles Manson controlled that group so much that he got people to go out and to kill uh, for him just because he wanted uh, to create some chaos in society. So, you know, those are the kind of things we look at. Now, there are three major studies in terms of these areas that uh, we're going to look at in psych. One is the Solomon Ash study from the 1950s on conformity. Another has to do with obedience, and that's Stanley Milgram in 1963. And the last one is the Stanford Prison Experiment of 1971 by Philip Zimbardo. We are going to take a look at the Milgram and Zimbardo most likely in class, but the Solomon Ash experiment we're going to take a look at real quick here. And again, it has to do with conformity. Now, um, first of all, when we talk about conformity, what we're talking about is behaving in a certain way due to some kind of formal or informal group pressure. So you're responding in a way that you might normally not, just simply to go along with the people in the group. Now, Solomon Nash set up an experiment uh, back in the 50s, and he would have a number of participants in the, the study, in a, uh, basically in a group in a classroom type setting. And then he would show them a series of lines, like the ones on the screen. And so, for example, the question that he would pose is, which line, line A, B, or C, is most like the line on the left? Now, if you look at this, okay, you could very quickly tell that line C is the one that's most like the, the one on the left. So then he would go around and he would give every single person in the group a chance to answer the question. So let's say that you're the sixth or seventh person in line, and the first person looks at this and says letter C. Next person, letter C. The next person, letter C, and so on. Eventually it gets to you, and you say letter C because that's what you honestly believe. Now, he shows you another set of lines. Okay, these here. Uh, which line, A, B, or C, is most like line X? And again, if you look at it, I think you'll tell that line B is the one that's most like line X. And if everybody goes around the, the room and everybody says B gets to you, you say B, no problem. Now, let's say that this carries on several times. But then all of a sudden, we get this set of lines here. And again, the question is, which line, 1, 2, or 3, is most like the standard line? Now what would you do, okay, now I think you can tell it's line two, the correct answer is line two, but what would you do if the first person said line three, and then the next person said line three, and everybody around the group continued to say line three. Now you're looking at this knowing that you believe, firmly believe that the correct answer is two, but everybody else is saying line three. What would you do? Would you conform, or would you stand your ground and say what you actually thought the correct answer to be? Now, the thing about Ash's study is that when he would put a group of people 
in a room together and he would do this experiment everybody that was in the room with one exception was actually in on the experiment if they're in on the experiment that means they know what's going on they're playing along with the experimenter um, it's already set up what they're going to do we call those confederates okay so basically everybody in the room was a confederate except for one person and that one person was the subject so all of those people when they give the wrong answer they're doing that because it was already programmed that was what they were supposed to do now it gets to you what do you say well if you look at the research ashes results about a third of the participants so around 33 percent of the people conformed consistently okay these are people who admitted later that yes they gave an answer that they didn't truly believe in but they conformed because they didn't want to go against the group 70 percent of the people conformed at least once in the entire group out of all of his experiments only 25 percent of the people never conformed so that means essentially three out of four people are going to be impacted uh, on an average you know group three out of four people are going to be impacted by the people around them and they're going to go along with the crowd uh, maybe even though they don't necessarily believe in what the crowd's doing now you can look at the variety of implications on this it could be uh, uh, it could be with smoking with drinking with the way you behave toward other people uh, picking on people it could be with the language you use whether you know it, it's very common uh, when kids hit about the teenage years that all of a sudden you know some of the groups that you know cussing starts becoming uh, kind of a common thing and within that group that social group uh, people kind of conform and the next thing you know it's kind of a normal thing to be cussing in that group um, but these are, are situations where if you're in a different group you don't necessarily behave that way so you can understand Let, let's take a look I told you at the beginning of the semester that occasionally we talk about your parents why do your parents do some of the things they do can you understand how as a parent you would be very um, interested and concerned about the group of people that your children hang around with because you know that these types of behaviors can be very very uh, prevalent amongst different groups of people so uh, as a parent parents really want to get to know the kids that their child is hanging around with and they want to know you know what what are those kids like uh, can I trust what they're gonna do when they're all out together you know that's a very important thing that's why you know your parents are consistently probably asking you about the kids that you hang around with and and uh, what what types of things tend to be common okay we'll stop at that point